This is Boyema Wilfred, acting CEO of Weather Fund, and I'm watching Startup with Masharia Moro. Welcome back. This is the Startup, where we inspire businesses. Today, I'm privileged to be joined by True Shahetia. True Shahetia is the owner and CEO of Tria Group. Karibu sana. Asante. Thank you very much. Tell me the story first of all of Tria Group. Um, Tria in a way was born out of uh, an experience. Now, huh? as a business startup, what is the key lesson that I can learn from your story? Uh, for, tr for say Tria, if you're focusing on the media and advertising business, it was about finding a niche. So one key lesson for startups is find your own area of focus. It doesn't have to be very big to start with, because even for us, the bus advertising was not as vast or big as radio, or newspaper, or anything. We chose to go out and focus on a very niche area. So one, choose your niche. Two, then focus on that area, okay? And find a simple way to make your business model come to life. And by simple way, it means find where you'll get the product from, your supplier, Know who your team is going to be, so your people, and who you're going to sell the product or service to. If you have those three entities right, so from supply, your people, so your team, and the customers, right? Identify that pockets in advance, that this is where I'm going to get my buses from. These are going to be the team members who are going to help me deliver it to my clients, the customers, okay? So keep it simple, focus on a specific niche, okay? And just keep having that passion to succeed. That there has to be something in yourself that says, I will do it, I'll make it as tough as it seems, as impossible as other people say it will not work. You, you know, you, you can see it succeeding. The place of family in any business startups, what can you advise? In terms of the place of family? Yes. I think it, that is a personal choice, okay? It depends on what kind of person you are and whether you would want family involvement in your business uh, I think it has its own pros and cons pros is you've got someone you can trust someone you know that's on your own your own blood and and someone who you know if you're awake can run things on your behalf the trust element is there the con side is the fact that are you there also ready to mix personal family things with the business because a business is a business there has to be a line so I think for me it works the involvement of family works, but as long as you have clear boundaries, you've drawn a line between this is personal and this is business. Now, your journey, what are the key lessons that you can say they have propelled you to be where you are, Trusha? You're 29 years old yeah. and you're empowering so many lives. Thank you. What are the lessons that you can uh, say? Accept rejection several times. Just know it will happen. You will keep facing it. In your startup phase, even when you do your business, we got rejected by so many clients for Tria before we finally got our first ones. Uh, for my supermarket business, which came as a result of the advertising business, because the advertising business did well, I was able to then invest some money from the advertising business to finally own my own first supermarket. Even for the supermarket business, you know, I went through a lot of sites to identify the first right one to buy. In some places, as I told you, I even lost money putting deposits in places that later I regretted that it was a bad location, it was a bad choice. So one, it was about be prepared to be rejected, but let the rejection not make you give up. Let it actually make you come out stronger to see how can you address those challenges raised. If you're rejected, it's a good thing because that person has at least listened to you, given you his time and told you, no, this can't work for me. So you know how you need to go back and revise your strategy to make it work. So the next person you see, you get a yes. So you have to keep going. Persistence is key. And then from there, you have to be able to know and identify the right people to work with. I think that's very important as entrepreneurs. Whether it's family or whether it's people from outside or whether it's people who you've headhunted yourself, build the right team that surrounds you. Because you're only as going to be as good or as successful as the team that surrounds you. Alone, you cannot do everything. So you need to be able to work and identify, to have the right team that you empower and they're behind you seeing the vision and direction of where we're headed. So that is very, very key. 
Um, and I think the, the, the final bit just comes to the fact that when you're out there representing your brand and your business, be passionate about who you are. Be passionate about what you do. Love, absolutely fall in love with your business. And that is what will get through those hard times. Because the tough times come. Whether it's rejections or, as I said, be prepared to lose money. Be prepared to make mistakes. That's the natural cost of life and business. You will keep failing. Okay? Yes. But real failure will be when, when you accept that you failed. Right? The success comes from the fact that you decide and agree that fine, I failed at this time. I've learned from it and then the next time I find myself in a similar situation, I will not make the same mistake twice. That is success. Success is sometimes not repeating your mistake. Failure is when you decide to give up. That's all I think. Okay. Two last question, Banatrusha. I know time is really on our side. The place of mentors as a business startup, what can you say? Oh, it's really important, I think. Yeah? As, you know that if I you have to be the one who makes those decisions, but it's good to have a sounding board, somebody you can bounce your idea off. Because we're all human beings, none of us were created perfect, and it's within these imperfections that we require other people to make us better. And I think sometimes you need somebody else to be able to talk to, to be able to, as, as I said, as much as you make the final decision, it is important to get that advice or a second opinion because somebody backs up what you're doing or they will make you think in a different way so I think it's important to have mentors that doesn't mean you go crazy and start talking to each and everyone because you also have to be careful as to the people you pick because sometimes you might end up sharing a lot of things with people who you think are mentors only for them to rip off your ideas it happens you have to select the right people to surround yourself with so Select whether it's just one or two, that's it. But people who are genuinely interested in seeing you do well. And they, will, they, have, your, they, they have great concern for you in your success. So I think the mentors thing is very important. And find people you're comfortable with. Okay. And Should they be in the same sector that you are in or you can pick any other? In? Any other. I think the business journeys are the same. Industries vary. Yeah, but the experiences all different business owners have, I think they they are eighty ninety percent there. Yeah. Um, so in fact, sometimes it's good to talk to somebody from a different industry, because they can be able to give you a good learning or example from that industry, which you can implement. You know, across learning. So I think for me, it depends on the person, the mentor is actually the, the person, right? Not necessarily the industry or the business they have. They could even have a smaller business than you, but they have better advice for you on how to run your business. Your parting shot, what can be your advice to business startups? I think to me, it comes down to saying, think before you act. What do I mean by that? There's a lot of work that has to go in the planning phase before you even start your business. Don't just expect to start from day one and expect everything to be rosy. But if you somebody has a solid plan huh, that was written down on a piece of paper or somewhere on your laptop, these few strategies, what is my unique selling point? Where am I going to source the product from? Where am I, who am I going to sell it for? What is going to be my profit? Who do I need in my team? What are the roles I can do myself for now? Right? Later on, after having established what are going to be some of the other areas I can focus on. Okay? Well, the most important thing, as I said, is start with one thing and start somewhere. And let it grow. I think some of the biggest mistakes I've made is sometimes moving too quickly. Just because one area has had success, it, success has to be sustainable. Otherwise, it's just short term. It's a momentary thing. So I think what's very important is to be, to be patient in building up your businesses. Okay? So plan well before you start. Once you start, give it time and be patient. Because what I realize, I think, is most businesses to really be able to stabilize 
everyone talks about this whole thousand days, three years. That seems to be the magic number. That the first three years, the first thousand days are the most difficult days or the, the years of the business. So be patient during these three years. Uh, and that's what I'm saying. Don't run before you can walk. Right? Sometimes what happens is we get carried away with the fact that because we've seen uh, short-term success, we run ahead. Right? Initially, just be prepared to just sometimes wait it out for a year, two years. First. Because if you keep... Correct, nurture it. I think that's the right word. Keep hold of what you have and grow it properly before you start focusing on other farms and plantations. Look after what the parcel of land that you have. Until you fully cultivated that field, you fully harvested that field, you, you know you've ripped off and you're ripping off consistently the maximum that you can. Then it's time to look for another parcel of land. But before you've even, before your crop has even reached maturity here, you're running there, you're running here. Exactly. That, then what will happen is you'll actually find yourself uh, you know, even losing what you have. And you don't want to be in that situation. So I think what is important is plan before you start. Once you start, be patient to nurture that business and right through that initial startup phase, which as I say, goes up to three years. Then you can build on that foundation. Okay. Thank you so much, Trusha. That is powerful. Okay. At least the key message that I've learned as a business startup, I need to think before I start. Yes. That is critical. Yes, just don't start. Asante sana. That is the key take that we take from the story of Trusha Hetia of Tria Group. Very important lessons that he has given us. Until next week, give us your feedback on 20058. Yes, 20058, and we'll get back to you. I've been your host, Masharia Mohoho. God bless.